carne guisada is a general term that only really means a meat stew. However, different regions have some different expectations of what it will contain, just as the wealthy class often have better ingredients to use and a team of cooks that can devote days to preparing dishes. This is really a starting point for several other dishes, two of which I'm going to show you here. It's quite different from the typical family or peasant style versions, for good reason. Read the history of this recipe here if you want to know more. In a bowl I've got the salt, cayenne, and black pepper. I'm going to add a tablespoon of flour to this and give it a quick mix here. Just a little bit of extra seasoning. And then the, uh, the short ribs are going to go in and you know, toss them around to coat them first. <laughs> and these are going to go into a deep fryer. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, while that beef is cooking the deep fryer, I'm starting off 120 grams of sliced onion in a dry pan, no oil at all. We're going to start cooking this to, to char it. So while the onions are cooking, i got the other stuff uh, set up. This is the meat that was cooked in the deep fryer. I've got a handful of different dried chilies, uh, some of which I dried myself. You can use, uh, you know, an interesting selection, whatever you can get your hands on. Uh, a whole garlic head that uh, was peeled and, and trimmed. Uh, it's about 35 grams. And this is the rest of the flour and seasoning mix that didn't stick to the meat. We're also going to keep that and uh, wait till these onions are uh, ready and then we're going to add the pepper. Okay, and when you start to see some parts of the onion that are very dark brown, we're going to add all the chilies to this. Don't stir it around too much, but uh, just make sure everything's distributed evenly at least. Give it another couple of minutes now. And after a minute or so, you start smelling this aroma, of the powerful aroma of the chilies <coughs> that are cooking strongly. So now I'm going to add the tomato. Um, I want to call it tomato sauce, but what this really is is just a puree of tomatoes. I'm trying to heat down from 8 to 6. The heat's a little bit lower, and I'm going to cook this until it starts to uh, get and it's about five minutes later, this is appreciably thicker, as you can see. We can more the tomato paste now. Now I'm going to add the meat in. It's deep fried. And I'm going to add water. Enough water to cover it. And all the garlic. Um, to add the, uh, the rest of the seasonings in the flour, uh, and some bay leaf, dash of cinnamon, then an entire tablespoon of ground cumin, and a tablespoon of dried oregano. You can give this a stir and bring this up to a simmer. When it comes up to a simmer, I'm going to put a lid like this on uh, partially cover it and uh, it, the exact amount of cooking time isn't especially important here we need to cook it till it's tender it's going to be cooked for two or three hours but uh, after it comes up to a simmer now we're going to add that sweetened condensed milk to it why you don't do this sooner I'm not really sure but this is the way it's done honestly I have no idea why this isn't added sooner it's uh, it's strange to me too, but I'm just I'm just following the way it's done. So, okay, that's in. The lid goes back on. It's gonna stay at a simmer for quite a while. After about three hours of simmering, I fished the the meat out to a platter. You have to work through it yourself, of course, and and pick out the the bones, separate the meat from the bones. And the liquid that the meat was uh, goes to a uh, sieve into a second pan. The solids are discarded, and uh, this liquid's going to start to be reduced. And this is the liquid that the meat was cooked in with the chilies and all. Um, I'm reducing it now. 
and you can see it's not a rolling boil, but it's, it's a good strong simmer. As you're working through this and taking the meat off of the bones, you have to watch out for um, parts where there was connective tissue that won't break down any further. You, you've got to pull that out. Let's see if I can find a piece to show you. Like, see this, this tough edge here? <coughs> this has to be trimmed off. You're going to have to take a knife and, and work your way around it because this will end up just being a tough, nasty piece in somebody's mouth. This is no good. We want to get it just to where it's just the meat and the fat is all. Now, <clears throat> once you've got it to this point, you're going to start cutting it up into small pieces. You could use a food processor for this if you want, but I like using a knife because that way, if I made some mistake and uh, I left some piece of bone or some tough piece of cartilage in there, I'm going to find it with a knife, and I can I can I get a second chance at making sure that everything's perfect. So uh, it doesn't take long, really. This this meat's pretty soft. Just make sure you work with it while it's still warm, not hot to the point where it burns your fingers, but warm. If you let it, if you let it get cold, it'll be much harder to do this task effectively. You'll have a harder time distinguishing what the the tough parts are from the the good parts. The next day you have the, the beef that's been refrigerated overnight and you've got this lovely dark sauce that's um, been uh, gradually transformed just by leaving it in the refrigerator. It kind of reacts with itself and it's much more mellow and, and nice now. Now there's several different things you can do with this. I'm going to show you one application right now. This is quite heavily smoked corn. You just run a knife down it and take it, take it off the cob. And a non-stick pan on a medium heat. It's five out of one to ten. I'm going to add a little bit of water, and then I'm going to add some of this beef that was cooked, <coughs> braised along with the fat from it. And we're going to start um, cooking this to render the fat, and then crisp it up in its own fat, uh, similar to how you uh, prepare duck confit. After about three minutes, it starts to sizzle. The water helps uh, conduct the heat and helps melt the fat faster. That's why it's there. And you can see in the video here how it's darkening up as it's being cooked. And there's still pieces though, like this, this is, this is mostly fat. It's not melted yet, so this is not done. We need to render this fat out and really cook this meat in the fat, so we're just going to let it go for a while more. <coughs> this is what you want to see. This meat is pretty crispy now. It's deeply curled, colored. Now I'm going to add some of that sauce in. And the uh, smoked corn. And they have some uh, chopped up a scallion, the green part only. I'm going to add a little bit of this in too. Still with the heat on medium. I'm going to cook this a little bit more and, then, and taste it and adjust the salt level in uh, just a couple minutes here. We're mostly we're looking to uh, warm up the sauce, but we're going to cook it a little bit. But actually, I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.